We got some updates on the Halloween TV series Scream 7 and Terrifier 3. Let's get into all of these fun little things. <laughs> They call me the magic man. Welcome to the Killjoy Jake YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jessica, and today we've got some big horror movie updates to discuss. Starting off with the Halloween TV show, we finally got a bit of an insight as to what the approach is going to be with this series. From Miramax head, Mark G Gilman? Mar <laughs> That's not it. From Miramax head, Mark Helwig. Miramax head, Mark Helwig says, the foundation of it is the original film, the John Carpenter movie, the characters of that film, and perhaps a group of characters that we haven't really focused on that much in recent film versions, or even in a number of them. It's a creative reset completely in going back to the original film, as opposed to spinning out of any of the more recent film adaptations. All right, that's cool. Like, I'm glad that they're not making a Corey Cunningham TV series, but like, isn't this the same thing that they said about H H2O and Halloween 2018. Mark, I get that you want to disconnect from the Blumhouse movies. That's a good move here, but don't just be making another Halloween 2018 with your TV series, man. I don't know about that. To me, so far from this quote, sounds like they don't have the exact foundation laid as to what this series is going to be. I'm really hoping it's not another Halloween 2018, another H2O where it's a direct continuation to the original. That's not what we need right now. I'm really hoping that this isn't going to be focused on another character from the original, but like 40 plus years later, and it's like what their adventure was down this brand new timeline. Don't give us that. That's just Halloween H2O and Halloween 2018 again, man. Give us something fresh, baby. Set it in the 70s. Have it take place moments after the events of the original film. That alone is something new and fresh that hasn't been done yet. Well, okay, Halloween 2 kind of did that back in... 1981, but in the TV series form. It's different enough. It's different from most recent entries. That's what I want. Give us something that isn't a Laurie Strode story too. Helwig also mentioned that we're on a fast track. It's a big priority for us. We've had lots of exciting conversations in recent months with a number of really talented people, and I think we'll have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be doing very soon. We're hoping to lock down the creative team very soon. Besides whatever the concept is going to be for this Halloween TV show, who's going to run the thing? We know that Brian Fuller, who did the Hannibal TV show, is busy with Chris the lake is there any other horror people out there in the tv world specifically that would be interested in helming a new halloween show i'll be honest i'm not as well versed in the world of tv as i am with movies but if anybody specifically in the horror tv space would be a good showrunner for this i mean kevin williamson is a name that pops up in my brain like his shows or not williamson has made a lot of successful tv in his day dawson's creek and vampire diaries ladies and gentlemen that's some money right there it would be really weirdly full circle to see kevin williamson work on this project too considering the fact that Scream is just a gigantic love letter to Halloween and all the movies that came after it. That kind of insane full circle moment would be so cool. I would be so down for something like that. Whatever ends up happening with this show though, I hope it's just not the same approach that we had with Halloween H2O or Halloween 2018. Just give us something different. Come on now, Miramax. Now getting into a Scream 7 update, Mason Gooding, who of course plays Chad Meeks Martin in Screams 5 and 6, has given us a bit of an update about what's going on behind the scenes. Or I guess I should say a lack thereof. Speaking with Variety, Mason Gooding says, If it could make money, I guarantee you they'll make it. And after being asked if he would return for the seventh installment, he responded with, It's one of those things where you wait to hear from the people that make the big decisions. It's all about keeping up with what feels like is the best movie for the fans. Scream doesn't exist without the people who enjoy it as much as they, if people want it, they will certainly try their best to see it happen. So it sounds like to me that Mason Gooding is just as out of the loop as all of us are. But I do agree with Mason Gooding here. They are going to make Scream 7, whether it's with legacy characters or not. Trust me, it's not the greatest news, but like Mason says, if it could make money, which it definitely will with the Scream title in there, they're gonna release it. There's also a rumor going around right now that Spyglass is looking for fresh new talent for Scream 7. Who knows if that's true or not? Another big thing I want to point out here, which once again, not looking good for fans of Screams 5 and 6. Mason Gooding and Jasmine Savoy Brown have both on separate occasions now said that they have not received any updates or words from Spyglass Media. It's been looking grim for the core four after Melissa Barrero was fired back in November and Jenna Ortega not coming back due to scheduling conflicts and a pay dispute. Honestly, I feel like the chances of any of these characters coming back is all the way down to zero at this point. It makes me really sad because I especially love Mason Gooding. I think he's fantastic in this role. He's so funny. He's a great comedic relief and he's also invincible. My man took like 36 stabs to the chest and he lived, dude. That's insane. I want to see him come back and live through 40 stabs now. Come on. In all seriousness though, this is a damn shame. Here's hoping for some good Scream 7 news on the horizon, fingers crossed. And real quick, while we're on the topic of Scream, there is something that I would like to correct from a previous update. A couple of days ago, we had the Melissa Barrera update, as 
I dubbed it, where pretty much every update we talked about in some way related to Melissa Barrera. One of the ideas I pitched was that Melissa Barrera could be in the I Know What You Did Last Summer remake. That comes directly from my buddy on Twitter, who I unfortunately failed to credit in that video. So massive shout out to Corrado. Thanks for the killer ideas, man. And once again, hashtag put Melissa Barrera in the I Know What You Did Last Summer requel. She ain't gonna be in Scream 7, so make this happen, Sony. It's up to you. The choice is yours. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. And we got ourselves a Terrifier 3 update because Damien Leone just posted this disgusting picture on his Instagram yesterday. Now you might be saying to yourself, Jake, you can't possibly have a theory about this. It's just a bloody bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Damien, you thought you were good at cropping a photo, but I have this all figured out, buddy. I'm your worst fucking nightmare, buddy. I'm gonna spoil the whole thing. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I got nothing on this. Yeah, like, honestly, not a damn thing. What I can tell you, though, is I think I know where they filmed this, based off of another picture that Fuzz on the Lens reposted. I know this isn't much to go off of, but in the tags for this repost here, in that top right corner there, it says hashtag terrifier, hashtag art the clown. And considering that this bed looks like it would be in a bedroom of this very suburban looking house, I imagine this is where Art the Clown will strike at some point in the film. Whose house could this be, you might ask? Well, we do know about some side characters in Terrifier 3 that I do want to run by you just real quick here. Based on this casting call that came out last November, it appears that Sienna and Jonathan may be staying with their aunt and uncle Jessica and Greg. They also have a 12 to 15 year old cousin Gabby. All of these characters are considered supporting leads, meaning they'll be in the movie a lot and probably won't make it to the end of the film. And I think with today's update, we've already seen their blood. I mean, it's it's fake blood, just to, just to be clear. Don't demonetize me, YouTube, please. This is movies I'm talking about. It's not real. Y'all got me on on that Winnie the Pooh short the other day, and it's makeup, dog. I'm pr it's just makeup. While this in no way confirms that any of these characters will die, or if this is even their house, I would say it's a pretty damn good guess. The other side characters that we know about at this time, one being Cole, Jonathan's roommate at college, and Mia, his girlfriend. I don't really think any of these college-bound characters are living at home still. Based off of the teaser trailer, I think it just makes a little more sense if that was Jessica and Greg's house, but we'll just have to see. What do you guys think of all these crazy new updates? A Halloween TV series? Scream 7, still in turmoil, and Terrifier 3, bloody bed. <laughs> what else can I say about that? Is this going to be the bedroom sequence 2.0? I, I kind of hope not. I hope it's something fresh, something different. Actually, to add to that update just real quick, we do know that Damien Leone likes to kill people while they're sleeping in bed. That's pretty messed up. Leave me something about today's updates in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching through this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe for more horror content like this. Please consider supporting me on Patreon by clicking that link in the description below. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.